questions that you have that are related to like your problem specifically, there's going to be an opportunity for you to ask those questions. But during um, these um, initial presentations, which are relatively short, um, try to keep your questions related to uh, what we're talking about at the time. So like right now, I'm going to tell you about a really basic uh, the Nova Folding Protocol for those of you who don't, who aren't as familiar with it as um, some other people. And um, what else do I want to say? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. You won't finish the tutorial. Um, so this is how at least mine and Liz's are set up. You're, we're going to give you a short presentation on um, some, some things to keep in mind when you're um, running these, for example, the Nova folding protocols. And, uh, and then that's going to last about 20, 30 minutes. And then um, we're going to let you actually uh, try to get some hands-on experience by like, following, working through the tutorial document that should be in your folder. Um, this is using the Ab Initio Relax um, uh, application that you might have seen in your uh, binaries folder. And firstly, um, I want to tell you like a little bit of outline. So we're going to have a little introduction of like what is the noble building, what does it mean? And Jens already went over that yesterday, so um, that will be very short. And then I'm going to tell you some information on um, the input files, how do you prepare for a building run, and uh, running it, and then how would you analyze the results. And then a brief discussion on um, folding with membrane ab initio and folding with restraints. Um, but so those are basically the same as folding like without restraints or folding the soluble protein. So they're just a little bit different. So it's kind of why I leave them at the end. And there's some information in that um, in your handout too. So what is the novel folding? This might look familiar to you. Basically what we're saying is um, we're folding from the primary sequence of your protein. So not really, as opposed to using like a, a template like you would in comparative modeling. Um, and we use fragments generated from the protein database to do this. And um, what you do is you basically divide up your primary sequence into three and nine residue uh, sequence windows. And then you generate 200 fragments per sequence window based on your, um, for 200 fragments on your, um, for each sequence window. But when you're folding, you only use like, you know, 25 to 50 of those because those are the only ones that really meet all the criteria that you put in, such as secondary structure prediction, restraints, for example, chemical shifts, and things like this. Um, and those fragments are what dictates kind of like what your, that along with the scoring function kind of dictate what your model is going to look like because as you saw in the movie when you guys holding ubiquitin, you actually just replace the coordinates of your extended chain with the coordinates of the fragments from the PEB. Um, and what can we use Rosetta to fold? Well, um, we can fold um, small soluble globular proteins pretty well for um, proteins that are up to like 100 amino acids. Um, and I'm showing it uh, right here, keep the lessons on it. This is um, what I use for my test cases. And it's one of the simplest cases because it's very globular, alpha helical. Um, and here I'm showing that we were able to get um, atomic detail resolution of our models compared to the crystal structure using um, sparse EPR data. Uh, we can also actually fold uh, relatively simple uh, membrane proteins such as this four helix bundle. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, but we can usually do it. You, it requires more sampling um, in general. And um, the use of experimental strengths again really helps there. What we can't really do so well is holding de novo these uh, GPCRs like Rhodopsin. Um, it is, GPCRs have a more complex topology. They're relatively <coughs> large. Um, and uh, it's just really difficult for Rosetta membrane to fold these de novo. If you have a, a template, like it's easier to use a compar to do a comparative model in this case if you can. Um, for example, Liz is going to talk about that later. Uh, Otherwise, I would suggest using um, like experimental restraints. Like we in our lab use mostly distance restraints in the form of EPR distance data and um, intermodal distance data and paramagnetic uh, relaxation enhancements. 
from NMR, but um, you could probably also use control shifts and RDCs if you read this paper from um, Vermont. They talk about using a, a iterative protocol to fold with residual dipolar coupling shifts. And I'm not going to go over that today, but you can read that paper and they provide you with command lines. Um, so what's act so what what's involved in the Genova folding protocol, at least for us, for most people? So you input your primary sequence in the form of a FOXO file, and then you also import secondary structure prediction. And you make these fragments, um, as I was just showing. Um, and then, as the movie that um, the holding of ubiquitin that you were shown yesterday, we do these um, fragment insertions in a Monte Carlo fashion. We score it according to the um, Rosetta um, knowledge base potentials, where you can input um, experimental data. It's also based on just you know statistics from the PDB. Um, and then if if your fragment insertion results in a, a lower a lowering of a Rosetta score or energy, then um, you keep that fragment insertion, and you do this thousands and thousands of times until you come up with a fairly decent um, what Rosetta considers to be a fairly decent low resolution model. And then what we do in the end is um, filter these models either by satisfaction of restraints or just general score or you can, you know cluster or whatever, and then um, Finally, if you want to, you can take it to a high resolution refinement, which I won't really talk about today, but um, you can ask those questions later. So, what's involved in actually putting together a folding run? You will need a FASTA file of your primary sequence. If you have a native structure that you'd like to be comparing your folding to, for example, um, let's say you're trying to generate a good protocol for um, folding um, an ion channel where you have the crystal structure of the closed state but not the open state. If you want to put together a good folding protocol to model your open state, I would suggest doing a, a, a test on um, folding with the closed state and optimizing your parameters that you and your options that you're using for that before you m move on to trying to model your open state. And that way, because it because your protocol is going to vary from protein to protein. So if you have a test case, that you know the answer to. Sometimes it's easier to start with that and then take that protocol and move it to the question that you actually have. Um, so in that case, you would need a clean PDB file of your native structure and that you're testing against your fragment library files and your um, options file, which we'll go over. So what is involved in making the fragments? Um, I kind of took this slide from Dominic Grimm. He's the guru on picking fragments in Rosetta. Um, so, you first of all have this VL database where that's where we're getting the fragments from. Um, and your primary sequence is secondary structure prediction <coughs> from Cypred, um, SAM, and JUFO <coughs> mainly. You can use whatever you want as long as it, what secondary structure you put in is the, in the correct format Cypred, SAM, or JUFO. And then NMR data if applicable. And then what the make fragment script basically does is take all this input information and um, gathers up all the possible fragments from the database that fit to your sequence and um, <coughs> scores them according to the inf input information and then takes the top 200 um, according to the score that it, that it has. And I'm not really going to go into detail about that. You can probably email Dominic if you have questions. Um, and then you keep the best in fragments, like I said, usually the best of the best 200, and you write these out to these fragment files. Um, and a lot of you I know already um, use the Robetta server to do this. I think that um, the Robetta server doesn't really tell you what it's doing, but I think it basically follows this protocol. Um, the thing is that if you're to use Robetta, which I think is the easiest thing to do, um, you have to be an academic user, a nonprofit user. So for, in, for industry, you'll have to actually use the makefragments.pl script. For the tutorial today, um, 
those fragment files, all the input files are provided for you. So um, I'm just going through these things for your benefit for later when you're trying to do it on your own. <coughs> and um, then the next part is setting up an options file for running in Rosetta. This is the instructions for the, the Aminitio Relax application. Um, how, what, what do you want the program to do? So um, first you have these, um, this section, which is the input files. Notice the format, so in file and then native. This is the same as, you might see another format of this. So if I say in and then file native and then my like 2LZ and that means This is the same, but is the same as in file. I don't remember, Stephen. I think Stephen just kind of restarted this last night. And then you can also have two folders, just as long as you're consistent in your options file. Um, just don't mix up these things. Don't mix tabs and spaces. Um, don't specify your um, home directory as a tilde because Rosetta can't really parse that. So you should say, you know, instead of that, you should say slash uh, um, slash your system. Oh, because Rosetta can't parse that. So those are just some things to keep in mind when you're making your options file. So <coughs> let's see. So you pass it your fragment files and things here. And then this is telling Rosetta, what do I actually want you to do? Um, and I have these comments to the side to tell you essentially what they are. This is also in your tutorial uh, directory for folding. But um, increase cycles to 10 just says um, multiply the number of default Monte Carlo um, trials by a factor of 10. You can play around with this number. This is the number that they recommend. I actually use 2.5 when I'm folding with restraints. Um, but if you want more information in detail on how the folding protocol works, I would recommend Carol Roll's paper from Methods in Zymology in um, 2004. Um, the, they also recommend to downweight the radius of gyration from 1 to 0 0.5 and um, these, other, these other scoring terms. And, um, somebody asked how we come up with these things. So there is a weight optimization process that was done early on to kind of figure out what was the best combination of weights for folding, um, in this case, soluble proteins. And then a similar process was used for membrane proteins and these things are slightly different. Um, and then at the end of this folding run in centroid mode, um, Rosetta will do, a, we can do a, a fast relax. So just kind of, um, <coughs> Not just a minimization, you all, there's also relaxing of the backbone, but um, it doesn't take very long for this um, small soluble protein. And it just allows you to kind of see where the side chains might go. But uh, again, I wouldn't trust this on the first run. I would do this many thousands of times, and I might even do it in an iterative fashion. Um, so what's important here? If you're running on a cluster, you might want to make sure that um, you use these two flags here, so uh, running constant seed and J red seed number, and that is uh, because you want your each run to be different, and you want to assemble as much space as possible. And you need to make sure that that seed number, the one 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 one, is different for every job that you start. Um, these are just some scoring information. So, score find neighbor's 3D grid just sets up a 3D uh, grid of um, around your residue and, and finds all the neighbors in that area. It's just a much faster way of setting up for scoring. Um, and then you can also tell it to um, compute RMSDs. Let's say you're only interested in the RMSD of your model to the core part of the